Last year, I finally got something I wanted all my life. A full-sized anatomical skeleton. <laughs> I brought it home, sat it in the chair in the corner of my living room, placed a crown on its skull, a scythe in its hands, and one of those lifelike infant baby dolls on its knee. Around the baby's neck, I hung a garland of marigolds. In the skeleton's lap is a big picture book portraying the ascent of man from chimp to homo sapiens, which he's showing to the baby. Every day I sit in my comfy chair with my laptop and gaze across the room at this tableau. Life and death. Exploring together the drawn out trail of our evolution toward transcendence, or something like that. Anyway, they are my muses, my inspiration, my instructors, and my greeter of guests. Soon after this array was concocted, a rather preachy and demonstrative Christian friend of mine came over for a visit. Of course, he got it all wrong and immediately accused me of being a Satanist. <laughs> well, he's right, I am a Satanist, but that has nothing to do with having a skeleton in my living room. I told him that his accusation was simply a reflection of his own lack of awareness in regards to the use of symbolism and iconography, and I reminded him that throughout the long arc of history, many different cultures and religions have utilized death effigies as reminders of the ephemeral nature of life. I reckoned he was also a bit foggy when it came to the facts surrounding Satanism and that he likely had no real sense of the varying practices and belief systems which might come under its heading. Not surprisingly, this turned out to be the case. His final summation on the matter was that anyone with a skeleton in their house is disturbed. I asked him if he considered Buddhists, Hindus, and Christians to be disturbed since they all utilize death effigies in the service of their spiritual beliefs and rituals and often display them in their homes. Had he somehow forgotten that his religion's primary symbol is a tortured, bleeding dead guy hanging from a cross? What could be more disturbing than that, I ask? Six months later, I'm still awaiting a response. <laughs> become something of a hermit. I don't mean just since it's been freezing cold out. By lately, I mean for the past few years. The truth is, I don't have a burning desire to engage with the outside world as a rule. I'd rather stay home and study, or write. But every once in a while, I emerge from the crypt. Like yesterday, for instance, I took the bus to the Met. And all I can say is, wow, it's scary being out during the day. There's just too much light and too much noise and too many people. It's an assault on the senses. Generally speaking, I only go out if I have an appointment or a class or I really need supplies. Once in a while, I'll do an open mic. To be honest, the whole time I'm out, I'm constantly afraid I'm gonna catch something from one of the zillions of idiots who are coughing and sneezing and not covering. My worst nightmare is that some lice-ridden child will brush up against me. Kids are the worst. They're walking, talking petri dishes, swarming with every plague known to man. As far as I'm concerned, children should be banned from urban centers. Anyone who cares to procreate should be confined to special breeder zones out in the country. Keep your lice and your measles and your whooping cough to yourself. I'm getting more and more Howard Hughes-ish every day. Actually, my family now calls me Howard. I told them not to worry, unless I start saving my nail clippings and storing bottles of my urine. <laughs> 45 seconds. 45 seconds? Yeah. What? What happened to my five minutes? You got it. 45 seconds? Now it's Shit. Now it's left. I got robbed. Okay. All right. You know what the three scariest words in the English language are? Disney Vacation Club. <laughs> it's amazing how people will scrimp and save all year long just to get the chance to visit hell. And they can't wait to introduce their innocent little children to the smiling devil, Mickey. So tragic. I'm seriously considering moving. But what's the use? There's clearly no escape from the brainless, self-satisfied, yammering hordes of human mediocrity. Thank